Okay, folks, we're going to be taking a look at how not to do two-page spreads. And I got the idea for this video when I was reading through Age of Ultron, which was a 10-issue uh, Marvel event that served as kind of the thematic basis for the movie Age, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, it was uh, drawn primarily by Brian Hitch of Ultimates and Authority fame, also uh, Brandon Peterson and the late, great Carlos Pacheco. And one of the things that I noticed is that there were a lot of two-page spreads that had considerable ambiguity in directing where the reader's eyes were supposed to go next. Because when a comic book reader, at least in American comics, and manga this is reversed largely, uh, in American comics, you will generally read a page from left to right and then move down to the next series of panels and then go left to right and then move down to the next series of panels and left to right, almost as if you're reading a prose novel where you're reading one line at a time. Your eyes go from left to right to the end of the line, then they drop down to the next line, to the next line, to the next line, and you just go from there. And even when you have two pages side by side, you're still treating each page as an individual page. You're not jumping ahead to the next page. And there's two reasons for that. One of which is your center border, the page break, is just as hard a break as any kind of panel break, generally speaking. Now, there are times where artists are going to want to cover both pages as if they were one page, and we're going to be covering some examples of that. But there are good ways and bad ways to do that. And the problem that you wind up with often is that the reader doesn't immediately know upon encountering a two-page spread that the reader is supposed to be interpreting this as a single unit as opposed to two independent pages. And you have to give the readers clues as to how they're going to look at these two pages, especially in light of spoilers. You do not want a reader, well, the reader himself or herself, does not want to read ahead on each two-page spread for fear of spoiling something. What if there's something on the right-hand page that I didn't want to know yet because I haven't read the left-hand page yet and it wouldn't make any sense? So generally, readers are going to confine themselves to one page at a time. And when you break this convention, it's kind of like what I always say about panel breaking. You should only break it when you absolutely have to. And even then, there are some rules you should abide by. Now, for the simplest kinds of two-page spreads, those are the ones where it's really just one big scene. Like here we have all these Ultrons destroying a city. Now, even if you throw the page break in the middle of this, it still is going to read left to right, top down, like a regular comic book panel. You're going to take all of this in at once. It's only really when you start adding panels that you start getting into some complexity. So here's an example of one that was done well. You've got uh, three panels inset onto a giant two-page spread. But you can see from how this works that even when you put the page break in the middle, you're still getting a good flow because even if the reader treats this as two independent pages, the the way that the reader interprets this page and the, re the way the reader's eyes are supposed to flow over the scene is largely the same. You're going to go from the top left panel to the spread and then down to the bottom right panels. So this is a really well done two page spread that doesn't cause the reader any confusion. How about this one though? Now, of course, looking at it, we can see that the top two page or the, the 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 top panel is supposed to be viewed as one scene. But don't forget, you've got this page break in the middle, and the reader encountering this is naturally going to try to look down from the first panel instead of crossing over to the next page, and that's not going to work. And the reason that doesn't work is because we actually do have some action going on in the first panel. That is the prelude to what you see in the bottom panels. So where this is the way you're actually supposed to read it. You're supposed to go from left and then across to the right uh, side and then down 
into the corner. But because our instinctive way of reading panels is uh, to treat each page individually, you're not necessarily going to get this flow. You, the, the first thing the reader is going to try is to flow from here, uh, from the top left panel down in to the bottom left, and then we'll later encounter a problem when you see you've got uh, Hawkeye and Spider-Man walking into a drainage tunnel, and then you come back up here and you realize that they're still on the run. It's like, oh, wait, I did something wrong. I got something out of sequence. How am I actually supposed to look at this? This page break is a very, very significant page break. It, it serves just about as hard as a panel border. And, and really, artists should treat it as such and make efforts to overcome it if they're going to do a spread like this. So let's take a look at this one. This one's even worse because you start out, and you know, let's go ahead and insert our page break. We start out with a woman screaming because I think Hawkeye just shot her in the arm with an arrow. And then we move immediately to a TV monitor. Now that's, that's if you're going according to the natural progression of a reader's eyes, the instinctive comic book reader's natural progression. You're going to go in this pattern. And this is wrong. The way that it should be going is across to this TV screen. But how the hell are we supposed to know that? You don't even know that until at the earliest, this third line down. That is the first time that you have a clue. Maybe if you see it, if you let your eyes go across this page break, that you're supposed to be reading all of this as if it were one unit. It's only when you get down to this fourth panel that you absolutely realize, okay, wait a minute, something's not right here because I don't have any dialogue in, the, in this box, and that doesn't seem right. So what happened? And then you come up to here on the next page, and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't understand why I'm getting no dialogue for another couple of panels. And then in a little bit, you realize you've just read these two pages completely wrong. Where you should have gone was from left to full right, left to full right, left to full right, left to full right. But there's no way for the reader to know that up front unless the reader does what the reader has instinctively been trained not to do, which is to take in both of these pages at once. Let's go to another example. Now, this one is kind of genius because... <laughs> I'll Give me just a moment here, because it, it really does take your breath away when you realize just the ambiguity of these particular pages. So we've got a couple of pages. We've got a box up at the top that's uh, supposed to be, you know, helping us out, though. But again, the reader's natural instinct is to treat each page independently. So how do we know where we're supposed to go from here? And even if we were to take this, this portion the top portion as one panel. What does that tell us about the rest of this, given the, the symmetry, the absolute symmetry of these two pages? What well, doesn't tell us jack squat? I don't know whether I'm supposed to be reading this whole thing across in each one of these cases, or do the rules change halfway through, where we have the, the left to right all the way across for this panel, but then we move over to here, and we're supposed to be just coming straight down until we hit the end of the page, and then, or hit the end of page one, and then we go up to where we're under this two-page spread panel, and then we come down these four uh, or five panels in page two. Well, which way are we supposed to do it? Are we supposed to do it that way, or are we supposed to do it where we're reading left to right in every single case? And what's absolutely breathtaking about the ambiguity of this scene is that if you read the dialogue, I dare you, read it all the way down on one side and then all the way down on the other. And then try it the other way. Read it across uh, from left to right to left to right, left to right, left to right. You won't be able to tell from the dialogue where you're supposed to go. It could go literally either way. And the only clue, the only clue comes toward the end of the page where you notice that Captain America's hand is on Tony's shoulder. But then again, who's to say he doesn't put his hand on Tony's shoulder twice? You know, that's just as reasonable. So it, it's just breathtaking, the ambiguity of this. And the problem is most times you will not encounter this ambiguity. What you will encounter is more of a page like this 
where you have a paid, uh, you know, the ambiguity exists on the left hand side, uh, again, accounting for the page break, but it doesn't account on the right hand side. So again, let's go according to the reader's instinctive vision and see where we end up. Well, we would end up like this and everything flows. Logan, your nose, please. Smells like jungle. Uh, Captain America ends this panel saying, Susan, and then we see the invisible woman going off into a cave. She discovers a keypad. She's looking around a little more, and then she comes back saying, there's a door code locked. Do you have the code? All of this flows. This, this works as being treated as a single individual page. It's not until you come back up to here and realize, oh, this is actually attached to this panel, and this is the successor panel to this one, and so, so on and so forth, that you realize you screwed up. So this is, this is just kind of amazing, the way that this works here. Uh, you, you, you come all the way down here, and nothing looks wrong, and then you come up to here and you realize, oh crap, I've garbled this whole thing. And now you have to go back and try and read these two pages together again. So how do you fix it? Well, that's going to depend each and every time on the individual circumstance. There's no way to really lay down a rule that's going to fix these two-page spreads in every case. Sometimes it's going to take a very, very simple fix. For example, let's go back to this example where we had the two-page spread. We had Peter Parker and, and uh, Hawkeye uh, running across this, uh, uh, this downed helicarrier landscape. And we have this little bit of uh, information on page two. Well, what if we just took that information and we put it on page one instead? You know, why don't we have the characters running across here to this drainage ditch over here instead of uh, being located on this side? That at least minimizes the amount of confusion because then you'll say, okay, well, they're running and then they find a drainage ditch. And then you come here and you're like, oh, wait a minute, you know, am I supposed to, uh, you know, see anything out of this? Oh, this is actually attached to that scene. Oh, and there's the drainage ditch that they were running to. Okay. Um, but that's not going to be as confusing as completely missing any action in this scene whatsoever and having to come over to here to find out what you missed. Now, how about this one? The, the super, super, super ambigu uh, the ambiguous one. You know, where we don't know whether we're supposed to go uh, from top to bottom or if we're supposed to go from left to right on each sequence of pages. Well, the simplest thing that I could think of was do an extension across the page boundary. So here we have a little bit of a shrunken uh, panel set so that when the reader's eyes are going from left to right, the reader's eyes will not hit the page break first. The reader's eyes will hit the next panel first, and that will drag the reader's eyes across the page break so that now the reader knows, read this panel, now read this panel, and it works. And so when it, the reader will repeat the same thing panel after panel, and you will get a smooth flow. And that would be my solution for this particular piece. And and there's there's other examples where... You're going to have to come up with your own kind of solutions for some of these because it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all, one-size-fixes-all kind of solution. Uh, you're going to have to uh, do some work, do some forethought, and make sure that the reader follows the panels where they're supposed to go because your job as an artist, as a writer, is to make sure that your reader is able to follow along with you with as little effort as possible. And uh, anything that becomes a stumbling block in the way of your reader, you should get rid of it. Even if that means sacrificing some flair and sacrificing some flash. It's much more important that the story be told. So that is my lecture on how not to do two-page spreads. Thanks for following along. I'm Mike Partika, and uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you later.